my work uh, involves making small structures uh, using DNA like a filament. Uh, DNA, as you all know, is the hereditary unit of life and it is uh, like a thread uh, that is the size uh, of, of two nanometers. Two nanometers is so small uh, to give you an idea of that, imagine a strand of your hair that's magnified to the size of a tree trunk, which is one meter across. Two nanometers is the size of an ant on that tree. And if you now want to knit a filament that thin, uh, you're going to need very different kinds of glue. You're going to need very different kinds of ways to cut this filament and then use uh, uh, the rules of Lego, if you want. Uh, to be able to use these little filaments like building blocks to make small architectures uh, on the nanoscale, things that would reach the size of a virus. Um, and so our architectures and our work involves using uh, the principles of physics as well as chemistry to be able to attach filaments of DNA in space to give you small devices that carry out specific functions. My lab uses uh, these architectures to interrogate living cells uh, in culture or living cells that are present inside living organisms to understand a little more about how the cell functions. So what our devices do is to uh, measure the level of specific chemicals inside sub-compartments of cells called organelles. So just like organs of the body perform specific functions for the body, organelles of cells perform very specific functions for cells. And these functions are tied to the organelle maintaining a certain chemical composition inside the lumen. And so by making measures of these chemicals inside those compartments, one can understand whether this compartment is healthy or diseased or what is the defect. And this defect then informs us about how the organelle functions and how the organelle's function impacts the function of the whole cell. There are two parts to this uh, technology that we developed. One is to be able to measure the chemical uh, that you need to. And for this, we graft chemical detectors that glow different colors on our DNA devices. And the difference in the, in the color of the glow uh, basically tells us the measure of a particular chemical inside the compartment. The second is that you need to have a way by which you can send this measuring device into your organelle of interest. And that is a finding that our lab has basically uh, pioneered which is to glue on uh, motifs on our DNA devices that act like homing signals so that the moment they bind the cell's membrane, the surface of the cell, this homing signal kicks in and takes it directly inside the organelle. Now your measuring device is inside your organelle and you can then read out and understand how your organelle is functioning. Most definitely, there are commercial applications for this uh, technology. It's what I call antibody plus. Uh, antibodies, uh, I think, revolutionized uh, three different areas. One is drug discovery. The other was in diagnostics. And the third is to understand molecular mechanisms of disease used in, ac across uh, laboratory uh, worldwide. Um, and I think our devices uh, go one step further because in using our technology, you can actually look at cells while they are alive, which you can't do so with antibodies. The second thing that um, we can do uh, is to get chemical measures and get the metabolic state of the organelle while the cell is alive. And so this really means that you can use this in very new ways to develop new kinds of diagnostics, um, uh, straight from blood draws. You can use this to identify new drugs for for uh, a whole slew of diseases, uh, as well as to really understand and see the cell working in a way that we never could before. Here's how I envisage it making your life simpler. What measuring sugar did for a diabetic 
is what we hope our technology will do for a whole variety of diseases. So the first time you get diabetes, you have to go do a hundred tests and then you know that you have diabetes. And after that, as a patient, you can monitor your own sugar levels. You have control over uh, progress of your disease. You can, can see what's good for you and what's not, uh, of course, uh, in connection with your doctor. Uh, but if you now look for more complex diseases like neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, uh, these again have a slew of tests that you have to go through. And so we are coming up with ways by which you can come up with a single test, take a blood draw, a pinprick of blood, uh, use our, our probes and our analytics uh, to then be able to uh, track the progression of, predict early uh, manifestation of uh, neurodegenerative diseases and manage your own disease uh, in ways that are quite liberating. So I think we are living in a really um, enlightened era uh, where the participation of women in science is, uh, is not only being recognized but also being encouraged. So there's never been a better time to be a woman uh, or a young girl. I think the best way that you can encourage young girls to start thinking about a career in science or STEM um, is starts at home. Never make your daughter think that uh, she cannot be an astronaut, a physicist, an astronomer, an engineer, a computational uh, a neuroscientist. Uh, I think we should never ever tell our daughters uh, that this is not a profession for women, or X is not a profession for women. They are all certainly um, available uh, for women to make their mark. Uh, and I was very lucky because my father never made me think that I could not do uh, any uh, chosen profession. He said only one thing, I don't care what you do, just be the best at it.